In this tutorial we're going to be looking at using Adobe Illustrator to create features for characters that already exist inside of CTA2. So to do that we need to start with a character and I've got one here that's been made from various aspects, uh, various assets already within CTA2. So here's our character here and what we want to do is we want to add a moustache to the character but before we do that we are going to also just alter some of the facial features uh, the main one being the fact that uh, we'll turn the beard white and the brows white so that uh, the character is more like a, a wizard so to do that we need to actually take the character into the composer, character composer you need to have the character selected like this in the viewport and then if you go over here to the left hand side we have this little icon here which says character composer so we'll click on that and this brings the character into the composer now once the character's in we can get a bit of view of it since we want to work on the face we want to zoom in a bit we can use the focus button up here but it won't zoom all the way in so uh, typically you'll need to just navigate in using the navigation tools so I'm just going to push in a bit and uh, get a better view of the face and what we want to do is we want to as I said, change the colour of the beard and the eyebrows. So to do that, we need to focus on the head of the character, which uh, you know, we can do just by clicking on it. Like so, I've just double clicked. Now, the way clicking works in CTA2 depends on what tool you're in. I was in, I've just clicked off here, which has kind of basically deselected the character. I was in a navigation mode up here. So when I clicked on the character, nothing happened. So to actually select something when you're in a navigation mode, you need to double click to actually get a selection. If you want to get a sort of selection, a quick selection, then there is actually a selection mode, which is this arrow here. And as long as this arrow is, you know, basically, as you can see, it says select. If that one is actually selected, then you can just single click and any particular item will become highlighted. So I've got the head selected now. And what we want to do is we want to change some of the colors. And uh, this is done using a, the Render Styles palette, and that is available over here on the left. So you'll see there's a number of tools available down here uh, on the left-hand side. And if we hover over them, we'll see what each one's called. And basically, we're looking for the Render Style palette, and there it is there. It's called Render Style. It can also be sourced using the R key. You'll notice there's a shortcut key there. So I'm just going to click on that. This has now opened the Render Style palette in the right hand side and when it opens it'll look like this this is, this should be how it will appear to you when you first open it and this is where you can globally change the, the render styles including things like you can remove the outline of the character so if I click on that you'll see the character no longer has a, a black cartoon outline around it and that is a global setting for the character let's put that back on and Obviously, you know, you can use one of these styles. Here's a line art style, which will just turn the character to a very stiff, contrasty black and white uh, silhouette style. So this kind of, these are the kind of styles that have been made available for this character uh, when it was constructed. And it's through these styles that we're going to be able to alter just the beard and the eyebrows. And to do that, we need to open this panel here. And this is the advanced settings panel. And this allows us to get at what are called the vector name groups. You'll notice here there are called group name selection. What these are are, are parts of the character um, that have been designated as a group. And the character is actually drawn as a vector drawing. And it's possible to group the vectors uh, together and give them a sensible name. And you can see that here. So basically each, each one of these is controlling a particular part of the character. So what we want to do is we want to find, well, let's go for the easy one first, let's find the brows. So if we scroll down, we can see there's an item here called brow. And um, we now have these color control sliders over here. So what I'm going to do is just try it. And as you can see, I'm now adjusting the brows. So if I push all that to 100%, we're going to get white. And uh, so now we have uh, white, and I'll just take the saturation down to make sure there's no color in it. So we now have white eyebrows. Now if you kind of at any point um, mess any of these up and you're not sure you can reset e everything uh, and you can do that just here. So if you hit reset you'll see all the parameters will default back to the default for all of the, the parameters. So 
If I now select brow again, I'll just redo what I just did, desaturate it and push the brightness all the way up, and that gives us white brows. If we want to do the, the beard now, we need to find the beard. Uh, the beard isn't uh, immediately obvious as to which part of the character it is in. Um, you can see there's various groups called skin, skin 2, and if you scroll down a bit, you know, we've got another version, but you'll notice it tells you what part of the character they're for. So this skin 1 and skin 2 are for the hands, and we know we're dealing with the head, so we need to, need to stay with those that are associated with the part name that is the head of the character, because that's what we're editing at the moment, or we want to edit. So we have a few here that we can uh, play around with and see. Now, for, for example, if I select skin and adjust the brightness, you can see that just the overall that one particular skin skin tone. And obviously, there's more than one skin tone by the look of it. Uh, you can see that there's a skin two here, and that appears to be the darker shade of skin that's being used to cause the features on the face. So again, uh, any of these, I'm just going to put that back to its value that I found when it came in. So those are the skins we've done, and that hasn't affected the beard in any way, so that's obviously not affecting the beard. There is this one here called hair. Uh, beard's made of hair, so that's possible. So that's a lot. Uh, yeah, there we go. So basically, hair one is the beard for the character. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to desaturate, take all the color out, which will push it to black and white gray, and then push it all the way up to 100%. So that now gives us white. So we have a white beard, white brows. So we've basically made uh, the adjustment to the character we want through using the render style palette. So I'm just going to minimize that and close it. And that's our new character. And this is going to be the basis for the character that we're going to you know, alter for the features we're going to alter inside of Illustrator. So the next stage will be to do that. But right now I'm going to save this character. So I'm going to back out of the composer. And that's this button up here on the left. It says back to stage. And we have our character back on our stage, and obviously you can see I've got a Wizard 1, a Wizard 2. These are the different versions I was creating on the way. So we need to make a new one. So let's select him to make sure he's in focus, and hit the plus button in my custom library. And this will put him into the library, and we'll now call him Wizard 3. So this is the version 3 Wizard. So that now you know, means we can come back to this character any time he's in the library. If we mess anything up, it's kind of a safety for us, and uh, you know we can uh, we can always load him back in.